Okay, here we are, Dirt World TV. Uh, we are up here, well, Bell HQ UK, let's call it that. Uh, I'm here with Toby Light now. We are gonna talk about this bad boy, uh, the Bell Moto 10. Now, if like me, you're a, a big Bell fan, and I am, and as you can see, this is a genuine work of art. I'm looking at it, I'm seeing where the vents are, or whatever, so let's get into finer detail about the design concept, everything that the Moto 10 does. This is obviously the carbon version. Um, you'll see these helmets on the heads of some pretty serious talent. Uh, Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb, uh, Jeff goes Parrott. on. Me, yeah, Jeff Parrott. Um, so Toby, let's talk about this in more detail. Um, it is a fine looking piece of kit. I can see here that already it's kind of not one shell. Yeah, absolutely. Explain so. that to me because it looks like that bit sits on top. So explain more. The the motor then is only available in a carbon fiber option. So it's a 3K 2x2 carbon fiber outer shell. And absolutely, as you said then, it's sort of standalone, different to anything else you would see on the market just from looking through the, the aesthetics from the externally. So we've got a two piece segmented shell. So it's based on a three shell, three PS, but the outer shell is made of two different materials. So as homologation is changing, it's getting a lot harder to put venting into helmet. So Bell went back to the drawing board, completely redesigned the, the shape and the shell of the helmet and the construction of it. So we've got two different pieces. So you've got the bottom piece of carbon fiber here, which underlaps the top piece. And then you've got an, ex an additional piece on top of the helmet. Right. So imagine you've got the bottom wrapper end of carbon and then another piece overlaying that. So what that does is, is protects you from any penetration impact. So if anything, sharp or aggressive would try and get through the helmet which could come through a venting and make contact right. with your skull it prevents that but then additionally gives you a full vent all the way through the helmet so am i clear in thinking then what you're saying there that the under here this uh, this bottom shell doesn't actually sort of join there's there's loads of there's a yeah, gap there. there's uh, four points of contact where it's forced together obviously it's tested yeah. to the highest yeah. center, so it's not going to come off under impact but yeah but absolutely. essentially that's that's one big vent on top of your head a full vent all the way around the helmet which no other helmet manufacturer has, uh, has managed to has managed to put into a helmet so a massive increase in the ventilation and but most importantly stops any spike testing or any penetration coming through the helmet through a vent or which you could yeah because that was interesting what you said about the homologation and now so obviously you know the rules are set you know obviously safety needs to be taken consideration so basically driven by the homologation they this is this is yeah you know brands like bell are they're always there's standards to meet but premium helmet brands you know try to exceed that so instead yeah. of just closing off the vent into the helmet and passing the test yeah they added a vent all the way through the helmet so that they could still offer that comfort whilst out in competition and of course in motocross in particular you know uh, certainly in the uk there tends to be uh, in the winter anyway uh, wet sand and stuff flying around so in, in many ways um, kind of doing it like that as well sort of stops exhaust ports being clogged up and yeah yeah there's no there's no point nothing that's going to get vented obviously if you take a big sample to the dirt you could yeah, put it in there but everything's clean and cleanable and, and yeah optional additionally there is a lot of venting into the helmet as well coming in um, but you know with that in mind it's not so often even in the minus temperatures that we get here in the UK that People are coming off the off the back without any sweat on their heads. So That's venting true. high intensity and low speed of motocross tends to lead to some yeah. high temperatures within the helmet. Yeah. So yeah, sorry, I, I, I interrupted them, but I wanted to because I wanted to find out what was going on under that. I mean, I'm, obviously we're not going to dismantle it to that point. So. Uh, yeah. So that's just one key feature to me. Looking at it, I mean, like I said, it is a genuine, a genuine, just wonderful work of art, really. Um, so tell us more. Yeah, uh, we've also got some safety features within the peak and more venting within the peak, but we'll come back to those when we finish off the helmet. We'll get to the most important parts first. So when we look at the internals of the helmet, the cheek pads, the top pad liner, the comfort liner and the chin strap, everything made by an American company called Virus. So what that offers is magnetic cheek pads. So if you have any head or neck injury, the medics can pull those out through the bottom to prevent any further injury. And then if you put that backside down on the back of your hand, it should feel put the helmet down for a minute. around 10 degrees cooler than your natural body temperature. So with that, it's got cool jade forged into the liner. So it contracts heat energy, it's moisture wicking and natural material. I know this, you could probably think, yeah, that's easy for you to say because you're just filming it and you can't, we haven't got a temperature gauge on it, but genuinely that, yeah, you you never it kind of put it on the back of your hand is a sensitive part of the body. So that's nice not that doesn't feel. feel like room temperature to me. Yeah, you know, it should, so it should be 
cooler than you are yeah. natural body temperature. And again, it just goes to with the venting, with the comfort liner of the helmet, just try and keep you hydrated for as long as possible and as comfortable as possible whilst competing. You know, and even looking at this pad here, I can see that there's so many crosswoven and different textures on it. It's not all done by one piece. I don't know if you can see that, but there's sort of bigger vented holes there with a fine mesh over the top. Then it gets a bit finer in and around here. So there's like about three different cross sections of yeah, material on that one pad. Density, yeah, different densities as well. Yeah. So that it's a softer when first on your head, but then obviously more dense within that. And actually than some of the previous models, they're slightly longer cheek pads. So that's right. just to help the cheek grip the helmet so that in an extreme mud race when you have either an extended peak on or a lot of weight on the helmet, stops the helmet dropping down uh, and moving your, your eye port for it in, you know, to yeah. help your vision. Of course, safety, as you've mentioned there, being able to pull them out, um, you know, head injuries more than ever in most, in so many sports now, you know, we are conscious now of brain injuries through other sports like football, rugby, etc. Yeah. Um, to be able for the medics to attend to a head injury without disturbing the neck or anything like that's pretty key, eh? Yeah, and uh, and we without being a, an absolute bell through and through nerd, touching on that, <laughs> you know, bell well, don't, just, don't bell don't just make helmets for motocross or motorcycling. You know, it originated in 1954. They've made helmets for NFL, yeah. the American Army, you know, road biking, any different type of helmet or any different type of sport where you could take a head injury. So. When we move to the safety features within the helmet, you will see that some of the technologies may not actually have come from the motorcycle industry, but are absolutely relevant in you know yeah. brain trauma and, and what they can prevent within the helmet. Yeah, so that's the padding. Um, you know, so that you said made by an American virus, did you say? Virus. Yeah. yeah. So you, people might be aware of it as the sportswear company. So it's almost you know as we have that Under Armour over here, it's like an equivalent right. in America when they've designed it. So a bit of a collaboration going on. That's absolutely, good. Yeah. yeah. And then when we move beyond that, you've got the spherical technology. So a lot of people know Flex with Bell that is still available. So we've still got the Moto 9S Flex range available, which has been super popular in the UK. But then beyond that, we've got spherical technology. So something that, you know, although Bell had great technology, they've again moved it forward uh, to develop spherical and put it in the Moto 10. So we've got two different densities of material. The first one will be slightly harder to see, but you can see here behind the red piece uh, covering. So that's your EPS for your higher speed impacts. Right. Um, and then closest to your head we've got EPP so that is for softer and lower speed impacts so two different densities for energy management if you have a high speed impact the two materials will compress to gotcha. manage that energy and then if you have a lower speed impact something that could still cause trauma to the brain then just the softer materials will compress and then so a high-end helmet that's not the norm obviously normally mid-range lower is that just one internal just one normal. yeah you just have like a, a single density or yeah. two density EPS, gotcha. which is more than enough to pass helmet safety standards and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but better just put something in there to cover yeah. lower speed impacts as well uh, just to try and you know prevent any further injuries through the brain and then <clears throat> additionally to that we've also got the mips liner so spherical is powered by mips mips is a separate company um, that bell have worked very closely with so in between the two materials we've got the mips liner so what that allows is for a slip flame so you can hopefully oh, see that. So that. we've got when you get the pads out, you can really see that, can't yeah, you? Yeah. So we've got that allows for ten to fifteen millimeters of movement, either it linear or rotationally. So the reason that that's been added to the helmet, you know, periodically it's been helmet technology helmets have been testing a very linear motion, either directly into the ground or directly into the wall. It's very unrealistic that you would ever crash in that motion. You would always tend to, you know, connect with the ground and roll off. And what happens yeah. in that motion is, I put the helmet down to help. You kind of, if you imagine. As we connect with the ground, helmet, skull, and brain are all going in that direction. Yeah, but then you've got the weight, the weight of your body. Then count, you, like adding more. Yeah, so forces, the, the right? inertia is going in one direction, and then everything gets snatched back. Yeah. So helmet and skull come back to stay in connection with your neck and body, but your brain's still driving in that motion. So what happens without getting too scientific is basically we've got tissues, we've got a fluid between our skull and our brain that allows us 10 to 15 millimeters of movement. Right. So when you exceed that 10 to 15 millimetres, that's when the tissues start to tear, which leads to bleeding, bruising and further yeah. injury. Can't stop that motion from happening in a motorcycle accident, but with the internals of the helmet moving again, 10 to 15 millimetres, it just reduces that risk or reduces that torsion or maximises our movement. So if instead of having 10 to 15 millimetres, you're closer to 20 to 30 millimetres yeah. to reduce Well, them. that is effectively replicating what is going on in your skull with the fluid in your brain isn't it i say absolutely i mean literally yeah. that that does the same as what your body does with with your brain inside your skull yeah it basically mimics our Within natural reason. reflex yeah, yeah so what we are designed to do to protect ourselves a helmet as advanced that to just prevent that again 
Yeah, that's that's so, actually seeing that move though, like that, you know, now you've taken the pads out. Yeah. I mean, so there you go. I mean, straight away, if you're conscious of safety for your for your, for your brain and your head, which you should be, you know, let's be honest, it's critical, uh, the most important part of any riding gear. That is is pretty darn cool. The and way you can that see that as well the big around. cutouts through it. So working with the venting through the helmet and the venting through the shell. Let's just big have cutouts look going at that. Yeah. So the vents still, you can really. I don't know if you can see that on the camera now, in my try, but you can see the vents coming in and how they go right through. If you can see that, but also obviously. As we said, underneath this top bit here is this massive ventilation anyway. So all that is going straight onto the top of your head, I can see, and driving all the way to the back. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, I like that a lot. I mean, you know, as I said, safety is, is so key. On a high-end helmet, look, you just, I'm gonna say it right now, you know, if you're gonna spend your money on anything, spend it on a decent lid. Basically, that that's the crux of it. Isn't it? You know, like you're gonna need good boots stuff as well. But there's a lot of other super superficial stuff. But you know, it's a dangerous sport, and that has taken it to a whole new level. And I think we've got what's this going on here as well? Because I can see, obviously, this is something new to it. Normally, we have like a just a harder material. Yeah, and, and a regular ridge across there. But it seems like the the shell has been brought up here, cut away. So what's these are a bit softer. So I guess that's for collarbone and stuff like that. It is, yeah. I'm just going to touch on one thing before we go there. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for mentioning it. Is you, as we've been showing it, people have possibly seen the eject in there. So that's something that Bell have adapted their helmets to take. So in the AMA, it's compulsory that you run a bladder pack in the helmet. You possibly often right. see coming out of the back of Tormax or whether any any riders in the AMA they have. Yeah, like, like a, almost looks like a camel pack. Yeah, and to coming at the bottom of the helmet. So they have to run that on top of the helmet. If they have any injury, the medics can pump it up and just remove the helmet. So that helps lift the helmet without yeah, them so moving the head? Not compulsory in the UK, but Bell have actually put a little cutout in the helmet so you can remove that and run the bladder pack in there. So that if needs be, if you do want to be able to pump the helmet off the helmet, it's in there and added as well. So not something that's massively known as for the UK riders or they're aware of, but again, just something that helps. But it's an option. In. Yeah, absolutely. So they can leave it with the parents or whoever can get to them and help okay. the helmet if needed under injury. Just out of interest, with, with that, is that something that's going to be available in the UK? It is available, you can buy it. Um, the only problem with it, because it's not compulsory, the first people that would tend to be with you would be the medics and they yeah. wouldn't have the kit to pump it off. Right, so, okay. Great feature for America, not so much for in yeah. the UK. So something we might see in a few years. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, we've been yeah. asked it coming. Um, but then absolutely going back to the, uh, what Bell call the NMR bumpers, sorry. Um, so well, you'll what, see what bumpers what they called? NMR bumpers. The and tell it's me called what that means. No miss race bumpers. So we'll get to the the points of it. <laughs> I didn't come up with the name. <laughs> no, that's, okay, <laughs> right. So uh, as you see, the softer material in the in the chin bar is for if you under extreme extreme impact, if you come in connect with the helmet, just to try and prevent you from beating your face up too badly. Um, but then that material follows on and comes to the side of the helmet. So the reason they put that there, and I wasn't actually aware of this, is that a lot of broken collarbones are caused by the helmet. So as you take a, a connection with the ground and the body moves, the side of the helmet digs into the collarbone and right. actually breaks the collarbone. So Bell have put the softer material, what runs in from the back of the chin bar to the side of the helmet, so that's nice and soft, compresses and rebounds as well, so it's not like yeah. something that will compress and be used once. So that that will hopefully manage the impact from the collarbone right. and just stop you missing a, com uh, missing a broken collarbone, which isn't massive brain trauma, but again, it's something that could make you miss a couple of races well, and <laughs> possibly lose a season. Yeah, <laughs> NMR, not yeah. miss racing. Yeah, so it's got so many uh, good points to it. About the peak, obviously the peak looks, um, you know, again, just two fastening points. Uh, we're kind of getting away from this middle fastening point. I guess that's now because again, that's a design to if you do a real dirt digger. Yeah, so we see lots of different variations from, from various brands and so on. So the way Bella went, went about the pig design is they removed the center screw, which one feature is again, I know we've touched on a lot, is venting. So without having yeah. anything in there, you can have a bigger opening to get more airflow through. So less drag on the peak and also just keep you more comfortable whilst in use. Yeah. But then without that, it allows for the peak to come all the way back or all the way forward under impact. So what we've got here, uh, when I remove the peak screw, We've got, you can obviously see the little plastic ribbon. You've got two ribbon. buffer, yeah, so, okay. So that, when that's in place and your peak screws in, stops it coming too far down, that's as far down, or too far back, that's as far back as it'll go. But under, uh, with any I energy, wonder. that will snap. So that come all the way back or all the way forward. Again, just reduces any energy transfer through to the neck or the body. And again, 
just try and prevent brain yeah. injuries than what you would be seen as just a brain injury. So those two little pegs are quite handy because they said without them you could do the bit if the screws come up, it, that, that, that stops it. Not, not come off, but if they came a little bit loose, which I'm sure they wouldn't, it, it stops it lifting right up or going right it won't down. Go, it won't come down into your vision no. or it won't go too exactly. far in the wind. Yeah. But if you do crash and they snap, you can Obviously. just pull it back in and it will be somewhere that you can finish the race and still use the peak to protect you from the yeah. elements. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I mean, um, I think it's fair to say, um, we, you know, we kind of, a couple of years ago, I think it was a couple of years ago, we kind of all knew that Moto 10 was coming. There was like, it, it was, it was almost, I wouldn't say delay, but there were spy shots and it's like, oh, when's it coming? Well, it's, it's obviously here and been there for a little while now. Um, I can honestly say, once you get it in your hands and you, and you look at the work involved in it, um, and certainly the safety features and the, it, the attention to detail, um, I think it's fair to say the Moto 10 has well been worth the wait. It certainly is a, an awesome looking bit of kit. Um, what we're talking about regards of retail price in the UK and, and availability and colorways and all that, how are we looking with that? Um, the price for the Moto, nine, Moto 10 is, starts at 649.99, going to 69999, depending on the graphic. So the yeah. solid one, which you see there in the nice carbon detail, a couple of options available, gloss or matte, be 649. And then uh, on the graphic, so anything where like an RT series yeah. or a replica, like a web replica or a tomat replica, uh, the additional price on that is yeah. Si um, yeah, 699. And I'm guessing we're going to be looking at a good load of stock coming in soon. So in all the shops and all the yeah, retailers. it's been it's been nicely part. We've had like yeah. a limited edition launch all the way through 2022. Um, there will be new designs coming for 2023 and, cool. and there on. So yeah, every year we manage to get a couple of limiteds and some rider replicas, yeah. which is always nice to see. Well, see now this is the hard bit. We've done the easy bit. Oh, well, I, I, the easy bit for me is that to talk about it. Uh, I'm wearing a bell cap, so now I'm going to try and sweet talk Toby into actually getting my hands on one of these suckers. Um, but I'm going to do that. Uh, Just the contact the off. local retail oh. network and it'll be six four nine nine nine. He's doing the hard sell, any hard sell. I'm have to take him out for lunch or something. Um, so there you go. That is the Bell Moto 10 in all its glory and all its detail. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We're going to be doing a uh, load more product reviews as we go on throughout the year. So thanks for that. Don't be a mug. Go and get yourself a decent lid for your noggin. I highly recommend one of these. Thanks, Toby.